Good morning, Falcons. It's Thursday, March the 26th. Welcome to another Falcon Day here at Summit Middle School. This is the last day before spring break. And this is also episode 7 of the Summit Show. Hey, this date in history, March 26, 1944, Diana Ross was born. Diana Ross, now let me tell you here, she had about 70 big-time hit singles, including Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And uh, the Guinness Book of World Records has declared Diana Ross as the most successful female artist of all time. So happy birthday today to Diana Ross. The weather today on Thursday, we've got a chance of rain, but it's going to be warmer. High around 62 degrees. That's fantastic. Hey, now let's connect with Ms. Miller again for some thoughts on self-care and sources of strength. Coming to you live from the Miller Living Room. What are your sources of strength? We're gonna review today. Hurley's pointing to family support. So everybody's got family at home. Maybe it was a family you were born into or you chose for yourself, but family. Next one, positive friends. Lorelai, how do you talk to your friends on e-learning days? Maybe Zoom. Zoom's a good idea, good. Next one, green mentors. Maybe you have a crazy school counselor sending you a message. Or you're like probably you. like me, or maybe talking to teachers on Canvas for sure. Who are your mentors? Maybe a coach out there. Next one, healthy activities. Good, Hurley. I know we like to walk our dog. What else no, do we like we to do? Like to do workouts. And doing workouts, absolutely. Healthy activities, doing fun things, keeping yourself entertained. What's that one, Hurley? Oh, uh, generosity. Giving back. If you're cleaning out your closets, maybe donating to Goodwill or Salvation yep. Army. Um, this one. Next one is spirituality. So a lot of people, you know, have some sort of a religion or spiritual. I like to just go out in nature too yep. and be so grateful for that. Remember when we went up in the mountains in Colorado? How cool that was? Yeah, that was very spiritual. Okay. okay. Um, the blue one, let's see, medical access. So especially now when everybody's worried about this coronavirus, we gotta take, wash your hands. Wash your hands, good. Keep that social distancing for sure. But if you need it, medical access is available. And that last one Hurley's pointing to, mental health. Keeping your brain happy. Everybody has bad days, right? And that's okay. Yeah. But we wanna make sure that we're taking good mental health care of ourselves. I'm gonna send out a little worksheet just for fun. It's nothing you guys have to turn in or anything like that. But yes, and you can do one too, Lorelai. Um, basically, keeping your mind focused in on things that are sources of support in your world, things you're grateful for. Let's get through this together, guys. What are your sources of strength? Bye. Bye. Well, thanks for checking in with us, Miss Miller. Now let's connect with Ms. Kataka for uh, some thoughts on uh, the books that you may be reading. Hi everybody, welcome to day something of quarantine at this point. I'm not sure what day of the week it is anymore, uh, but we're just pressing ahead. Uh, so today I don't have a specific book recommendation, but I wanted to talk about the books that you guys are reading for class. So I know that sixth graders just finished reading Yellow Star, seventh graders just finished or are finishing A Long Walk to Water, and eighth graders have started reading Night. So each of these books is based on a true story or is a true story. And in each one of them, the character, the main character, has to go through extreme hardship. Um, and they come out the other side stronger than ever. I wanted to say, first of all, a big thank you to you guys because you've been making it through this really tough situation really beautifully. A lot of things have been canceled on you. Things are generally not going to plan and that's really, really tough to handle. No one in the world has ever had to deal with something like this before. No one alive has had to deal with something like this before. So you guys are doing a great job and you're really making it through. Um, in each of these three books, 
they get through it a lot of time with the help of other people. They get through their situation with the help of other people. Um, so kind of some good news of the day, some good news in the midst of all this. As I've been scrolling through Instagram the past couple days, I've noticed that a lot of my friends are posting um, like pictures of front windows with encouraging messages on them or uh, like sidewalk chalk with encouraging messages. Um, and I just like seeing them all that they post. It's really you know, something good that's happening. It's sometimes hard to think about how we as just like normal people can help out with this whole situation, um, especially now that we have to stay home. Um, so I was thinking uh, something that you could do is kind of go along with these encouraging messages in windows and on sidewalks and things like that. So I, for my front window, have made a couple posters that I'm going to put up that just say things like stay positive and everything will be okay. Just encouraging people who are out going on walks while following social distancing guidelines. Because I don't know about you, but my neighborhood has been full of people out and about going on walks during this time way more than ever. Um, and a plus side of that too is I get to see a lot of dogs that go past my front window. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so during this time, think about the little ways that you can encourage your community um, and things that you can do from your home to just bring a little smile to someone's day because I promise you it'll make you feel better too. All right, guys, have a fantastic spring break weekend. Remember to unplug and don't think about school too much, even though the world is totally weird right now. Uh, try to do things that you would normally do during spring break, like relax, eat some junk food, um, and just generally chill out. So have a great break. I will see you guys after this week. That's great to hear from you, Miss Kataka, and that uh, that's some sound advice. Now let's head out to the farm and visit with Mr. Persley for another episode of Farm Life. Good morning Falcons, welcome back to another episode of Farm Life. Today we're going to talk about feeding the animals here on the farm, but first I wanted to review the calf episode, episode two of Farm Life. If you remember, we had four calves, their names again were Petey, Lloyd, Harry, and Seabass. Several of you got the right answer. The theme is the movie Dumb and Dumb, one of our favorite movies. The winner, the first one to canvas message me, was seventh grader Catherine Shannon. Congratulations, Catherine. Talking about feeding the horses today, as you can see, they're starting to get hungry. Primarily, horses' diet consists of hay and forage. I have a bale of hay here. Most hay bales, 50 to probably 75 pounds. And a typical horse can eat up to one and a half to two and a half percent of their body weight per day. So if you do the math on that, Average thousand pound horse, you're talking about 15 to 25 pounds of hay a day. Uh, so that makes up their primary diet. Of course, as the weather gets better, horses get outside more. And if you have some pasture, that obviously supplements what they're eating when they're in their stall, at least some horses. Also, if you come on in, most horses get a grain supplement as well. There's some commercial uh, grain pellets that are available that have certain minerals and nutrients uh, already embedded in them. I also have a grain supplement, come on in, that has made at a local mill, a variety of grains and supplements as well. Typical horses, on an average day, about 10 gallons of water, depending on their level of activity and also the temperature outside. So that brings us to the conclusion of episode three of Farm Live. Hope to be back to you again with some uh, additional episodes as we move forward. Have a oh, it's great to connect with you, Mr. Persley. Well, now it's time to recognize Wednesday's winner of the trivia contest. The question was, when was the last time a boys athletic team won a conference championship for Summit Middle School? The answer, was our seventh grade boys team from this year. Our seventh grade boys just a couple months ago won the Northeast Hoosier Middle-Level Conference Basketball uh, Tournament. So congratulations again to our seventh grade boys. And congratulations to the winner of the trivia contest. Drum roll, please. Seventh grader 
Sophia Salway. Congratulations, Ms. Salway. Well, that brings us to the close of this episode of the Summit Show. And we look forward to a little bit different format of the Summit Show after spring break. Ladies and gentlemen, today and throughout spring break, I do challenge you to commit to SOAR and all that you do and everywhere you go. Be safe, be organized, be accountable, and be respectful. And let's be happy and make it a great Thursday.